So patching um, is really just the process of applying updates to software, right? And either to address vulnerabilities or bugs or, or other deficiencies. <clears throat> but the primary reason of patching uh, with uh, widely used software is to address the security vulnerabilities that malicious actors might exploit. So if these vulnerabilities are left unaddressed, uh, they can be a potential entry point for cyber attacks and uh, leading to data breaches, compromise, and other undesirable outcomes. But <clears throat> other than that, uh, we look to resolve software bugs. So not all patches are security related. Many patches address functional bugs or glitches in software. Uh, we look to ensure that the software performs as intended, you know, without crash crashing or uh, producing errors. Uh, we also look to improve software functionality, so patches can introduce new features or improve existing ones. Uh, so it's uh, it enhancing these uh, software's overall functionality or performance. Uh, and maintain a software compatibility. Um, software systems evolve, patches may be necessary to maintain interoper interoperability between uh, newer versions or newer technologies. So. Uh, there's many ways that you can go uh, for patching, right? It, it can be manual or it can be fully automated. Uh, and, you know, what the automation, right, is to apply those patches without too much uh, user frustration or inter intervention, right? But that timely patch management, that's that's the critical part, right, is we don't want to let those either vulnerabilities or bugs to hang out there where someone can take uh, advantage of those uh, vulnerabilities. So I wanted to throw some stats out here uh, just to kind of drive this home. But, uh, according to the Ponemon Institute, 60% uh, of breach victims uh, said they were breached due to an unpatched known vulnerability where the patch was not applied. However, 62% claimed that they weren't even aware that the organization's uh, vulnerabilities uh, were there before the breach. And according to EdgeScan, the average time uh, to remediate internet facing vulnerabilities was 57.5 days. Slight improvement over the prior year, which was 60.3. Uh, so that varies from one industry to another, though. Uh, so uh, public administrators, uh, for instance, had a MTTR of 92 days, where healthcare organizations had a MTTR of just 44 days. But the data shows that the smaller an organization is, the uh, more quickly uh, they tend to recover. And uh, according to CVE details, out of the roughly 176,000 vulnerabilities, more than 19,000 had a CVSS score of 9.0 to 10.0. So 11% uh, of vulnerabilities have a critical score. Uh, checkpoint, uh, three out of four attacks took advantage of flaws that were reported in 2017 or earlier. So some of these vulnerabilities out there are very old and they're not being patched. Um, Palo Alto reported that 80% uh, of the uh, studied exploits were made public before the related CVEs have even been published. So more concerning is the length of time that passes between the published date uh, and the uh, uh, date that it was uh, discovered. So as a result, there's a good chance that an exploit is already available when the CVE is officially published. So the attackers are <clears throat> kind of one step ahead of uh, the security professionals. And um, let's see, Vericode. Uh, they released in October 2020, found that more than three quarters of applications have security flaws. Uh, and that said that uh, only 24% of those are considered to have high severity flaws. Any questions about that? Let me pop over to a 
you know, I have here real quick. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about uh, patching and how you can go <clears throat> and look about discovering some of these vulnerabilities or these weaknesses, right? So in some of those uh, articles that we had talked about is, you know, some of those organizations, uh, they weren't even aware that they had vulnerabilities. So I just want to give you a couple of uh, tips here of how you can go and look at and try to find some of these vulnerabilities so you can take action on them. So here in the security portal uh, for Microsoft, and uh, I should mention this is an E5. And under endpoints weaknesses, Microsoft gives you a nice list of all these CVEs uh, here. <laughs> and you can look and see, so by date, we've got mediums, we've got a high here, and this is based off of Edge Chromium. And even though that this tenant is quite small, I only have one device in here, you can see that uh, automatically uh, the Defender Suite here is exposing what type of weaknesses and how many devices we have that could be vulnerable to that. Now, maybe uh, you can see here that there's no known public exploit available for this, and maybe that's a way that we would start to filter this to see if there were known public exploits that we would prioritize those. So let me pop in here on this one here. So threat insights, there's no public exploit, there's no exploit kit, has not been verified. However, we can start to get a list of all the devices that either need a patch or some other type of remediation for that weakness. So going back to uh, our statement earlier where organizations aren't aware of what vulnerabilities are out there, Microsoft has a tool right here that's going to surface all those vulnerabilities and what systems they are on. That will help us prioritize how we go about uh, finding vulnerabilities and then patching those. So you know, having that robust patch management process with a very quick uh, MTTR is what is going to help your organization stay secure.